We are breaking into regular programming for just a moment because I want to take you to a breaking story. This is on the Grand Parkway north of Houston where there is a police chase underway. Let's go straight up to Sky Eye right now and Don Armstrong to tell us where we are and what he can see. Don? Uh, we are on the uh, north, uh, that make that the 99, the uh, Grand Parkway up here, and we're just east of I-45 following a Ford F-150. Uh, this truck has just had its tire blown out, and uh, we're waiting for it to come underneath this overpass here. Um, and as soon as we do, we'll catch up with it for you. I'm sorry we got lost in the trees there. You can see the pursuit behind it now, and uh, there is the truck. It has uh, both, looks like both tires now blown out. Uh, of the front end of the car, and uh, it looks as though that this is going to come to an end pretty quickly because it can't go too far without rubber on the front. So uh, we're going to stay with this, uh, understand that we're with uh, several other helicopters. This pursuit has been going on now for about 45 minutes all across the north side of town, and uh, as you can see, uh, he still is not stopping, but when he does, it should be a, a pretty dramatic end to this. I'm surprised because uh, this truck has uh, reached speeds of upwards of 100 miles an hour on the Grand Parkway. We've been trying to catch up to it for quite some time now. Finally have done that. But like I said to you, uh, that truck is uh, several miles ahead of us. We are uh, shooting in high power here on our camera on the sky eye. Uh, and it looks as though that, that things are starting to slow down. Uh, Mike, uh, our pilot, Mike Silman, is uh, helping me through this maze of streets up here um, that are unnamed. Mike, can you tell me what the name of this street is? That you, can you tell? Uh, Mike is listening to the airport and, and the tower. We're uh, also in official airspace. We're waiting for this to come to an end. And Melanie, we're going to continue to monitor this. This black Ford F-150, again, we don't know why he's running from police, but continues to evade uh, and continues to evade law enforcement here. DPS is flying above, as well as HPD and uh, Harris County Sheriff's Department. So uh, this is going to come to an end here very soon, I'm sure. I, I don't think so because they don't know this, this chase has been all over the place. It has U-turned twice already. Uh, once up on the Grand Parkway and another time over on 59, the East Tex Freeway. So you can tell that it's taken up a lot of real estate in this chase. We can't tell whether this is a male or female driving this pickup truck, but as you can see, both front tires are now blown out on it, and uh, it won't be long before this will come to an end, one way or the other. Let me pull out here just for a second while we've got a clearing in here. Um, at, at least a dozen, Melanie, uh, and uh, most of them HPD because this is where uh, the chase began. Uh, we're now, I believe, in uh, the southern part of Montgomery County. So we're continuing to monitor this and waiting for this all to come to an end. At one point, it looks like it's not going that fast now, but I would guesstimate about 60 miles an hour or so. Uh, and if I'm not mistaken, that looks like the Hardy Toll Road uh, tracks there. Uh, actually, we're, we're well north of the Hardy now. We're just passing Cypress Wood Drive, so that gives you some sense of how far north we are. And uh, I apologize for the picture again with the trees and all, but uh, again, we're trying to maintain clearance from three other helicopters that are in pursuit of this truck as well. And Don, you said it's been going on for nearly an hour now, at least uh, 50 minutes or so. It's hard to believe that, it, that a chase like this would go that far, but because of the erratic driving and all of the uh, different freeways that this driver has taken, it's been hard to put down spike strips. Now, I don't know whether the uh, front tires being flat were caused by spike strips or not. You, they were. Okay, we're just getting word that they were caused by spike strips. I'm surprised that uh, the back tires weren't blown out as well. But uh, as you can see, this chase continues on. And we know that it's always a very uh, sort of a dicey situation to get those spikes in front of a fleeing vehicle. 
uh, but obviously they were successful, as you say, at least as far as the front tires are concerned. And Don, you indicated that you don't know whether or not there's more than one person in there because it looks as though the windows are pretty dark. Yeah, the windows are very dark. Can't tell whether it's a male or female or whether there are other passengers in there. And we don't know why he was running from police. Usually these things start with a traffic stop as a rule, not always, but many times. And uh, some uh, simple uh, violation, and then the police chase starts. All right, well, if you We understand now that we're, we're, Melanie, we're getting word that this is a theft suspect. A okay. theft suspect. So uh, apparently involved in some sort of robbery, at least they're getting ideas that he may be involved in one. Well, and we know in We're a lot of cases. We're approaching 1960 now, Melanie. Okay. All right. Now in 1960. And, and we do know that in a lot of cases, theft means they've actually stolen the vehicle, that, uh, that they are racing away from police. And, and you know that those F-150s are very popular with yeah. thieves. We don't know if that's the case or not because there are many items in the back of this pickup truck. You can see the cooler back there as well. So we're not quite sure. And I was going to ask you about that, what might be in the back of the truck. And it looks like one of those elongated cabs as well. Yeah, and those uh, those uh, egg crate cartons that, uh, that you know, people use for hauling all sorts of different things in the back of it. Uh, doesn't appear to be anything dangerous. It's not a lockbox or anything, that sort of thing. But uh, the chase continues here. And this is a, a semi-construction zone because the traffic, as you can see, is uh, barreled off in one lane and only one lane is getting by and that's the one lane that he is in. I did see a police car up ahead of him. Don't know if I'm going to try to cut him off or not. We do have an intersection coming up now. Uh, I'm going to back out here so we can take a look and see what happens exactly here at this intersection. All right, just bear with me just, just a second here. A lot of traffic in front of him as well, but he's just squeaking right by there. This is southbound, Mike? Okay. I understand we're coming up on the toll road. We're getting on the Hardy toll road. And we're heading southbound. All right, as you indicate, this has been all over the north side of town so far. But now he's getting on Hardy going towards the south. Is that right? That's right, yeah. And um, I'm going to try to get a... Uh, get an actual location for you. This is, you know, the Hardy toll road has been under construction for quite some time. And uh, this looks like that area up here uh, north of the Beltway that is uh, seeing a lot of construction. You know, most of the time on the weekends, this has been shut down up here north of 1960. So uh, we're in that particular area. And I know you've been following this for a few minutes, but as far as you know, there have been no accidents with other vehicles or anything like that because we have seen him weaving in and out of traffic. And there doesn't seem to be any... any uh, any damage on the truck he's passing. Passing a police HPD, officer, I saw. A unit. Yeah, right there. And you can see the tire up there in the left-hand side is shredding because of the speed. He's picked up uh, quite a bit of speed now, probably doing about 80 miles an hour. It also looks as though a lot of uh, cars are pulling over there, so they may be hearing sirens or even loudspeakers from police officers in pursuit. Yeah, um, you know, yeah, we were hoping that uh, HPD would be ahead of him trying to clear the way here and maybe bring this thing to a, an end, but that hasn't happened yet. Um, there's just no telling which way he's going to go, so it's really hard to do that. And again, we should uh, tell our viewers who are just joining us that this is a police chase, uh, a black F-150 truck there, as you can see. We're understanding that the suspect inside may have been involved in some sort of theft. Does it look like uh, one of the tires just sort of gave in there? Yeah, it, it, he's obviously running straight on the rim right now. Mm -hmm. um, we're just past Ritchie Road, heading southbound on the Hardy Toll Road. Here, I'm going to pull out just a little bit to give you some perspective. Of so he's where actually we going are. towards town now after making that scenic uh, view of the north side of town. Obviously familiar with this side of town. Um, I would be lost. I, I, I could tell you where the Hardy Toll Road is. And, the main thoroughfares, but um, with some of these side streets and with all of the construction, he obviously knows this part of town. And we saw him pass yet another squad car there just a moment ago, so uh, they may be clearing the way uh, to prevent any possible accidents as far as this chase is concerned. But again, he's headed south now on the Hardy. 
Uh, we don't see nearly as much traffic here as we saw just a few moments ago when he was on 99. And Melanie, I, uh, that's one of the things I was going to point out before you did, uh, the fact that I have not seen him pass any cars. So I'm not quite sure whether they have shut down the Hardy or not. There is a construction vehicle that's pulled over, and maybe perhaps that the uh, police have gotten traffic pulled over to the shoulders uh, to get this guy out of the way and hopefully not cause any accidents. You know, that's always a major concern here, especially at, at highway speeds. And especially uh, during the day like this, uh, it's certainly been the criticism sometimes of these chases that uh, in some cases there have been innocent bystanders who were hit by a vehicle trying to flee law enforcement officials. But we continue to watch him making pretty good speed considering that he has no tires on the front anymore. Yeah, and we're coming up on Rankin Road. That's the Rankin Road exit there that he is passing. Um, so we continue to head southbound on the Hardy Toll Road. Um, I, I wanted to say that he would look like he was slowing down and getting ready to pull over, but that is not the case. But he is on rims, and uh, rims on concrete get pretty hot pretty fast. He could experience some brake problems if he does decide to finally give up. But uh, in the meantime, we continue to follow this chase southbound. The Hardy Toll Road just passed Rankin now. Now we're passing Greens Road, I understand. And we've been watching this but now you, live for about the last 10 minutes here as he continues to elude police officers. Do you have any sense? Uh, oh, well, now we can see them. A lot of the squad cars that are following him in pursuit uh, there. But once again, not a lot of traffic uh, to the left and right of him at all. Now, there, there, some uh, looks have gotten onto uh, the Hardy Toll Road now from the different feeders coming into it here at this point on the Hardy. You know, the other scary thing is, is that you don't know if this man uh, is actually a carrying a weapon. Right. What is going to happen when this vehicle does finally stop, and it will be stopped eventually. They all are. And, um, you know, we've, we've seen it end in many different ways, and uh, we hope that this one ends safely and peacefully. And interesting enough there, I thought for a moment uh, he was going to pull over to the left onto the shoulder there, but that does not seem to be the case passing up yet another truck there. We can now see more though construction uh, cones set up there. Yeah, and you know, that obviously, as I mentioned before, is, a, is a, a problem here because there's so many construction crews. He, okay, he did take the exit to the North Belt. Let's see what happens here. Uh, we've got some flyover ramps that are gonna get in my way. So you're just gonna have to bear with me here as I, I guess exactly where this car is. We're going to try to get in position so we can continue to follow him, but um, it's a toss of the dice here. There he goes. There he goes. No, nope, yeah. that's a different one. No, nope, that's another one. Still waiting. Um, okay. And we are looking for a so F-150 here we go. We're going truck. back. Is that the other him going way, back Melanie. the other direction now? Yes, going back the other direction. Uh, on the feeder, by the way, uh, not on the, the Hardy main lanes. So as far as we know, he got off the Hardy, turned back around in the other direction, and is now headed north again on the feeder road. Yeah, uh, and this has been pretty much the case with this for over an hour now as this chase continues. Uh, and we do see like more, more traffic here now, off. Don. Okay, yeah, let's, let me pull out here. Let's see where we are. Obviously, we're behind some trees here as we come up to this intersection. And it looks as though he may have run into uh, some traffic there. We see a truck, and we can see one of the police cars behind him. It looks as though he slipped through once again and is continuing on. Uh, but he may be pulling over now. No. He's making a right-hand turn. And still on the feeder road as far as today, you, Yeah. Yeah. Our pilot today is Mike Silman, so he's talking to uh, Bush Intercontinental Airport because we're in that airspace as well as the uh, other uh, helicopter traffic in the area. So he's as busy as we are. Um, Mike, do you know what, uh, what road this is? This is Greens Road up here, not too far from the airport. So he is now on Greens Road. Yeah, look, it looks okay, there he is we're heading again. eastbound. Am I correct, Mike? Rebecca Spira is joining me now. She obviously knows a lot more about the traffic patterns out in that area as well as the roads. Rebecca, what are you seeing here? 
Well, I can tell you Greens Road being so close to the airport with lots of people trying to catch their Friday afternoon or evening flights out of town are going to be dealing with a lot of issues if this keeps up. This is a very busy area off of the Hardy Toll Road near I-45 and Intercontinental Airport. Well, and as you can see there, he is uh, on rims on the front, as far as we can tell. Both of the tires blown out. We're now seeing the truck from the other side, uh, and clearly he is driving right now on no rubber at all in the front. Looks as though the, the back uh, wheels, at this point at least, are still good. Melody, one of the things I did want to point out, we just found out that Bush Intercontinental Airport is holding traffic because there's so much helicopter traffic around this up here on uh, Aldine Westfield. So that may mean that if anybody's flight is scheduled to take off or land at this point, uh, they're being held back while this goes on? I don't know that. We're now eastbound on Greens just past uh, Aldine Westfield. Uh, we got some trees in the way here. But the police chase continues. It's hard to imagine that something like this can go on for as long as it does, but because of uh, the elusive behavior of this driver it's as you know, been all over the north side up here. Well, and Don, it's interesting because uh, he, as you indicated, it looks as though this driver knows the area and certainly has been able to uh, evade police up to this point, making those turns, going underneath the freeway in some cases, and uh, really maneuvering some of the back roads as well. Yeah, he obviously knows this part uh, of uh, of North Houston. Uh, we're back in Harris County now, and uh, these are roads that I'm not all that familiar with. We normally don't cover them during uh, traffic, and the only time we usually come over here is in incidents like this or other things like fires, etc. But uh, th th this is uh, this is really uh, a peculiar place to have a chase. Coming up now on uh, JFK Boulevard, and, and it looks as though he's crossing uh, over the yellow line at certain points as he goes around cars. Don, yeah, yeah wow, that was that, close. Is he heading westbound right now, Don? Uh, I believe he's headed eastbound. Am I right, Mike? Ooh, something just fell yeah. off the truck yeah. there. It looks as though this may okay, be coming to we're, so yeah. we're headed e e uh, eastbound, and we're coming up on JFK Boulevard here. Okay. Let's see what happens at this intersection. It doesn't look like that vehicle is going to be able to do much more driving than it's done, and it's been working at a high pace, and... and looks like it's driving on its rim. Is that right, Mel? Yeah, absolutely, Rebecca. And we have just gotten official word that Bush is holding traffic. Wow. Okay, now he's pulling over to the side here, uh, which is very unusual for Bush Airport. But you can see things falling off the back of the truck there as he uh, veered over onto the shoulder, onto the dirt for a few moments. But as you say, Rebecca, he is keeping up that speed. Hard to believe he's been able to maintain it for as long as he has. And it looks as though that front the rims are just down to almost nothing. In fact, it looks like he's picked up the pace, if anything, since he's been driving on this particular road and, and the drivers there on, uh, this is JFK now, Don, that they're on? We are coming up on Lee Road now. Okay. And uh, yeah, he is passing, obviously, cars in uh, no passing zone. Extremely dangerous yes. for uh, those cars going the opposite direction. It just, uh, but you know, nobody abides the law when you're running from it. Absolutely, that's kind of a given. This is a KHOU 11 News breaking news report. Good afternoon, Greg Hurst, back with you again here. We continue to follow this high speed chase that is going on approaching an hour now. You see that what is happening. We have police, Houston police primarily, that are chasing this black pickup truck, but it's still unclear why. All we do know is that this pickup truck and the driver has done everything they possibly can to avoid and to uh, elude police. Uh, so far, it looks like they're driving on the rims on the left side. Looks like they've completely lost that front left tire, but they continue to move on. But again, the question is why? At this point, it's raising many questions, though, for police like why are they running? We don't know if this was started off as what we would call a routine traffic stop or why they decided to pull this guy over, but we know this is going on on the north side of town. As you can see, he continues to drive very quickly. This is somewhere around Greens Road, up again on the north side of town. I can tell you that this aggressive kind of driving will lead to an aggressive response by these pursuing officers. But children in the car, children in this truck right here, that would add a degree of uncertainty to this. 
Erratic, dangerous driving, though, frequently leads to an assertive response. And you can see some of the smoke coming back from the back end of that pickup truck and police still in pursuit. Again, just wandering all over the road. Part of the problem is he has no tires there on the right rim either. So riding on the rim on the front right and the front left. And we understand now he's over on Highway 59. At this point, the way this driver is going in this black pickup truck, the officers will certainly want to know if this suspect is armed and if they believe this pickup is stolen or they believe it was used to commit a crime, officers are going to operate under the assumption that the person driving this vehicle is armed and that will certainly change the way they pursue this suspect and confront the suspect once this truck finally does come to a stop. We know he's been driving fast and we don't know where he's going. We're not sure he knows where he's going, where he's going to turn next or what he will do next, which raises the degree of uncertainty and the danger like blowing through these intersections just like this. Again, continuing on the north side of town here in Houston, this pursuit has been going on now approaching an hour. And when adrenaline drives the car, these people just drive erratically. They drive dangerously. Also keep in mind that whatever they've done before, one thing is certain now that whoever is behind the wheel of this vehicle will now certainly face charges. At the very least, they'll face charges involving this chase, most likely something like evading arrest, and who knows what else by the time this is over. See him blow through another intersection, cars trying to avoid him. We're also going to be watching to see how pursuing officers will decide to stop this. They might try some roadblocks, even a rolling roadblock if they believe it's necessary, where one patrol car gets in front of the chase vehicle, slows it down, and the pursuing officers close in from behind. But so far, they have not had anyone get in front of this vehicle. In the past, we've also seen them use some type of barricades. They could also try the old pit maneuver, although it's more difficult on a pickup like this. Pit maneuver would be where a patrol car would just bump the back end, spin that car out, and that usually ends these types of chases. We've also seen them in the past use the road spikes, but we know that can also be dangerous. We know that one officer, Richard Martin, he died trying to do that when he was hit by one of these chase vehicles. So that can be unpredictable as well. Sometimes they just get lucky in these pursuits. These suspects, they will have a flat, they'll run out of gas, the vehicle will just come to a stop. Sometimes traffic will also stop these vehicles. Understand they're going down 59 now, going southbound, right around Louder Road. And we have been covering these kinds of chases for years now. And if this guy gets away, well, this is going to be a first because he'd have to be some kind of uh, David Copperfield to pull off some kind of magic. Again, continues to ride on the rims, on the two front tires, has lost both of those in this pursuit just by popping curbs and driving erratically. Also keep in mind, as we come into this traffic, this is again is an uncertain situation because we don't know when these vehicles and that's going to end it right there. Now we're going to see what happens with this driver, what he decides to do. Police will try to close in quickly. They will have guns drawn because they don't know what they're going to encounter once the person inside that vehicle tries to get out, if they're able to get out. And again, keep in mind the person who hit them, they could be injured as well. So again, this is not the way they wanted this to end. But we understand that this is happening right around Aldine Mail Route, just off of Highway 59. This man has been leading police on this pursuit for about an hour now. Again, police trying to close in, surrounding this vehicle, deciding what they're going to do next. We'll see if the man is capable of getting out of the vehicle or if he makes that decision to get out. They'll try to see what they can do to take a look inside this vehicle to see how many people are in there. They'll be barking commands. They'll want him to get out. Many times they'll ask him if he can walk. They'll ask him to turn around, walk backwards towards them. Then they'll ask him to get on the ground, and then they'll make the arrest that way. But you see several vehicles have, involved, have been involved in this crash at this point. We understand there were some children apparently in the vehicle that hit this black pickup truck. We're hoping that they're all right. Uh, police will try to do whatever they can to get them attention immediately and try to get the emergency personnel on the scene to treat those people. Hopefully it's nothing serious. But again, that's what happens when you're blowing through these intersections, trying to elude police. No one can see what you're trying to do and certainly don't expect this to happen in the middle of the day. They're just obeying traffic laws, following the traffic signals. And that's how that truck was T-boned and how 
this chase came to a conclusion. But again, it's still not over because we have to see how this is going to end with police. Again, there'll be barking commands. You see on the top right of your screen, they also have a dog. Sometimes they will send in that dog if the suspect refuses to cooperate. We'll see if he's able, physically able, to get out. But we do know that that crash happened on the passenger side of the vehicle, so he didn't receive the full brunt of the impact, but he did also roll into that other black truck that's currently on the scene. And you see how cautious police are, because again, this guy's been leading them on a chase for a good hour now. He refused to stop. They don't know why. They may have some suspicions as to why. Uh, they may believe he was armed because the way he was, he was acting, the way he was refusing to stop. And now this right here again is the dangerous part of how this could all play out. All we can do at this point is just sit back and watch. You would think that at this point they do have some type of communication with the person if he is conscious. But again, they are being extraordinarily cautious at this point. Officers with guns drawn. Again, take a look at the top right of your screen. That's the police canine who's on the scene. Dogs can be very effective in a situation like this and also very persuasive because most people don't like to encounter a growling, snarling, aggressive German Shepherd, sometimes a Belgian Malinois, which is what HPD uses as well. Under these circumstances, any confrontation, any kind of standoff here gets really complicated especially if bullets start to fly. People can certainly get hurt. People can get killed, especially innocent people. And this intersection has been completely shut down at this point. Again, the suspect at this point shows no signs of trying to leave that vehicle. And officers have withdrawn and have pulled back. Several ambulances have also been called at this point to treat others who may have been injured on the scene because of this crash. We know there was one vehicle that T-boned this truck. That was a head-on collision. So we're not sure what damage, what type of injury that collision caused. We're certainly hoping and praying for the best. We do understand that a couple of children may have been taken from that vehicle that hit this truck. But again, it's still unclear who was driving that black vehicle, that black truck there at the top of your screen, again, the second one, not the one behind, it's the one there in the very middle. But you can see, in desperate situations like this, where the suspect is putting people in danger, it's endangering everyone on the road. We'll continue to hold the live picture on the right. On the bottom left is the end of this chase. This is how this chase came to a conclusion here about four or five minutes ago. Now again, officers approaching the vehicle once again up on the top right. We don't know if that's because they've been able to communicate with the suspect who's inside or if they're just going to make an aggressive move. And at this point, they're definitely barking out some instructions. It looks like that may be a side airbag. They're trying to see what's going on. They're lifting that airbag, opening the door. Again, another airbag that's in the way. It appears at this point that they have the situation under control, but it's just too dicey to know until that suspect is in custody. And again, you see how cautious they're being. They have support people behind them. And again, the dog there now on the top left with the canine officer. So you can see the impact was definitely enough to inflate and then deflate those airbags. Those are the side airbags. They now have one person out. We'll see if that's the only person who's in there. He's now on the ground. He'll be handcuffed 
and taken away. So this is the conclusion of this chase that was happening for about an hour here in the northeast part of town. Again, we know at this point that he will be facing felony evading arrest charges, but it's unclear exactly what else and why they were pursuing him to begin with. But there is no escape at this point. This one has come to the conclusion. Now our focus will certainly be on the people who may have been injured in this crash, people who were inadvertently brought into this scene, just trying to go along with their normal day, uh, picking up kids from schools, running errands, whatever it may be. They ran into this chase vehicle, that black Chevy pickup truck. Again, the suspect riding on the rims, desperate apparently to get away, but not in this case because he involves somebody else. And again, you see the conclusion over on the left-hand side of your screen. That's the small box over there. And again, if someone is hurt or killed during this pursuit, this price is really going to go up, possibly aggravated assault with a deadly weapon or vehicular homicide. We never know. Certainly praying for the best with those people. This next will move to the investigation mode. As you see, they're ready to take that suspect away. We'll take a look at where the most serious crimes took place and the lead agency will then take the lead in that. Officers, the victims, the witness will all have to be interviewed. Was police procedure followed? Was all of this necessary? Thankfully, no bullets have to be accounted for here. No shots were fired. And it, again, it appears that there was only one person in that vehicle. He's the one who's in custody there, it appears. But you've seen the dramatic conclusion there to this police pursuit. Started again about an hour ago. It ended in a crash in the middle of an intersection there on the northwest side of town. Officers had their guns drawn. They were able to haul that suspect out of the vehicle. Now they'll take him back downtown where he will be booked. We're going to be working in the meantime to find out just exactly why he was running, try to talk to some people who were there involved in that pursuit. We'll also continue to try to find out exactly what happened to the person in that vehicle right in the middle of your screen there, just below that traffic signal, because that's the one that T-boned that truck as that truck was illegally going through the intersection. That car, that silver car in the middle of your screen where we're zooming in, is the one that had the right-of-way going through that intersection. We believe at this point there may have been children in that vehicle. We understand that police and emergency personnel were taking them out of that vehicle and escorting them away as we zoom in. But again, it is unclear on their condition. But you see the extent of the damage on the front of that vehicle that T-boned the black truck as it made its way through that intersection. See, police will be wrapping this up. And again, this is going into the investigative phase, trying to find out exactly what happened and what they may be able to do differently next time to avoid this type of ending. We're understanding several ambulances have been called to the scene. We know that at least one innocent bystander was involved. We also believe that perhaps another, another truck uh, that was hit during the spin out may have also been involved. Uh, we don't know their condition. We're still trying to find that out. But again, you see how many police vehicles are currently on the scene. So again, this is the conclusion of a police chase that was taking place in the northeast part of town, northeast Houston. One suspect has been taken into custody. He certainly will be facing evading arrest charges and who knows what else by the time this is over because this led to a violent crash there at that intersection. We're going to be in the meantime between now and our 4 o'clock newscast doing the best to find out more about how this happened, why this started, why they were chasing this particular suspect, why he refused to stop, and also trying to find out more about the people involved in that silver, apparently a Cadillac there in the middle of your screen uh, that was damaged severely when it T-boned that truck in the middle of the intersection. In the meantime, traffic in this part of town is certainly going to be tied up for a while as I try to clean things up. But we will continue to monitor this and have much for you tonight on KHOU 11 News at 4. This has been a KHOU 11 News breaking news report.
Uh, they're just checking out these uh, people here to make sure that they are okay and don't need to be transported look, to the hospital. Is, is that a little boy that we see there, Don? I'm sorry, say again, please. Is that a little boy that we see there outside of the car? Was that a yes. child? Yes, there, oh yes there are a couple of children at least uh, that were in that silver car that was hit so hard. And that makes the situation that much worse, that uh, their lives were endangered by, by frankly, this idiot driving at you know, top speed on rims and right through an intersection. Uh, it's really upsetting. We're also noticing, Don, several different types of uniforms. So it looks as though there were a number of law enforcement agencies involved. Obviously, Houston police, because as you say, it started in town and they, they began with the chase. But it also looks as though there are some DPS troopers as well, perhaps some sheriff's deputies. Yes, and uh, constables as well. Mm -hmm. All law enforcement agencies that are involved in this part of town are up here, including uh, the Department of Public Safety. Uh, usually DPS doesn't get involved uh, unless they are requested to, and that was the case with this because it traveled over so many miles and such a long distance. And uh, at one point they were having trouble keeping up with him because as you saw in our coverage, we went behind several trees for quite some time and they didn't want to lose him. You can see there, it looks yeah. like a mother is hugging her two children. And and thankfully, it looks like they are okay. They're standing. Uh, we have a live picture from the ground now. Uh, one of our photographers has made it there. And, and you can see uh, on the left side of your screen, uh, the ground shot and that vantage point of what's happening. Here we are. At and the you truck. can also see how incredibly damaged that truck is. Uh, as we saw, nearly flipping over when it was hit by that silver. But now you can see there was nothing, nothing. They were driving on absolutely nothing, as, as you said, just the rims there, um, but everything else gone. And we're also getting our first look kind of inside that truck, where it appears as though at least a couple of the airbags were deployed. Uh, officers uh, scanning the truck, um, but just hard to believe. And it was a handicap truck, is that right? Or was this that's another the other, vehicle? That's the truck he hit, I think. Oh my that's goodness. That's a Tundra. Yeah, he hit a truck oh, that goodness. was a handicapped truck. Yeah, this just keeps getting worse, doesn't it? When yeah. you realize just the sheer recklessness of this driver. And the young man that, that was driving the Ford truck, mm -hmm. uh, the reckless driver, um, we saw him get out. He he looks to be a, almost a kid. Yeah, we, we, maybe, maybe late teens, early 20s. Uh, and as far as we know, by himself, I uh, did appear to be a man there, by himself inside that truck. Um, and we don't know yet the reason for this chase, but Don, as we understand it from uh, your report a little bit earlier, this may have been some kind of theft. We don't know if he stole the truck or perhaps stole some of the items that were inside the truck, but it may have been uh, the uh, theft suspect who spotted the officers and just took off. And they managed to, at the very least, disable the front of the truck by uh, puncturing those tires using those strips. However, it still meant that uh, it went on for another 15 to 20 minutes and many miles and ended up with just really a, a devastating crash at the end. And it appears as though the folks who were in that silver car are all right, but it could have gone much, much worse. Take a look at this officer, Melanie, mm. kneeling down to that little girl who, who was in that other vehicle, making sure that she's okay. And probably comforting her the best mm -hmm. way he knows how, because you've got to imagine this was a terrifying situation for them. And here he, they're giving them water. It looks like bottled water there, talking to, we presume, the mother there. Three kids. Three, yeah. Is it now, is it two? Oh, is she holding a child? Is that oh, it? Is she holding? I, th I, I see a little boy tell. in orange standing right next to her, okay. a little boy in green, and then that little girl. Oh, yeah. Three children that were presumably in the back seat of that car. Inside that car. That mm -hmm. is just absolutely terrifying. Mm -hmm. And it just gives you a sense once again, and Don, you can certainly attest to this, having followed many of these police chases, just how oblivious or uncaring these drivers are when it comes to other people. Look at that. And you can see the little girl in the pink there coming over to the front of the squad car. And it looks like there's uh, another perhaps family member with this group that is sitting in the passenger seat in a turquoise shirt. Mm -hmm. uh, Stephen Romo has yes, just it, gotten to it, the scene. It, Stephen? It appears as though it's, I'm sorry. No, I go ahead, Don. Say it appears as though it may be uh, the mother mm -hmm. uh, and the grandmother here with uh, three of the, the mother's children. Mm -hmm. uh, if I were to guess, that would, that would probably be as close as I could get as to uh, 
the members of the family here, but uh, all appear to be okay. They're not requesting a transport to the hospital, although medical personnel are here on the scene. As you can see, they're putting the gurney back into the ambulance, so that is great news, especially the impact of that hit yes. on that silver car. As a matter yeah. of fact, I, I can pan up and show you, and you can see all of the damage to the silver car here in the front end front end of it is completely obliterated. That is a Cadillac CTS. Absolutely, and, and that could have been a much more deadly situation. It's just unbelievable. Stephen Romo has arrived on the ground along with his photographer. Uh, crews on the scene looks like they're treating people right now, and it looks like we have someone in the back of this car. Uh, police are talking to and questioning right now. They've uh, ushered him over there, and uh, they're keeping most people back. Lots of people are trying to get shots of their cell phones. It's it's sort of uh, difficult to figure out exactly who all the players are, but we have seen people, looks like some minor knee injuries on a woman over here who we believe was in this car. We're working to confirm all of that information. Of course, we're gonna. there's an ambulance arriving right now. We're going to continue to follow these developments and bring you the latest as soon as we get it. In the truck, we know uh, we saw a couple of things fall out of the truck when the police officers arrived, and then also in the bed of the truck, there were. Yes, several here we have Alfonso here. He was actually in this black pickup truck over here, the one we were talking about oh with the God. license plate. So, Alfonso, can you just tell us what happened? Yeah, we uh, uh, just came out of the restaurant from eating, and uh, we saw the truck coming, and uh, his front uh, right tire went flat, and that's when the truck came and, and hit us. Was anyone but hurt inside of your truck? My mother, yeah. But uh, she seems to be, she's just shook up, but her knees hurts a lot, so. What happened yeah. what, what happened when you were inside the truck? What did you see? Oh, I just saw all the glasses flying, and uh, I saw all the cops coming with guns. So we uh, ran out the truck and ran down the hide over there, so. Did they take your mom to the hospital? Uh, she's in the ambulance right over there. We don't know. You been able to talk to her? Yeah, she's she's really shook up. So I'm not sure if maybe her knee messed up some or or her hips, but they're checking her out right now. Did you have any idea what was happening whenever they? Never, no, no idea at all. It just came out of nowhere. You guys were just leaving the restaurant and all. This yeah, happened. and all this happened. Mm -hmm. yeah. Stephen, I don't know if you uh, can hear us, but so I'm shook up, but uh, I think I'll be okay. Yes, I can hear you. Stephen, I, I wonder if you would ask him if they had any sense that this chase was going on, if they heard sirens or saw the lights flashing from the police in pursuit. Before this crash, did you have any indication that there was a chase happening? Never, never. No, we were, we were coming from Katy, and uh, I was coming back to eat at this new restaurant, and uh, we were headed to the hot, so my parents' house, and that's when the truck just, it just came flying at us. And uh, uh, like I said, it, it hit on my mother's side, the passenger side. So all this stuff we see spread out here, was this stuff in your truck or was it in his truck? In his truck. Oh, okay. All that stuff is from his truck. Mine only had that on top, but. What are the police, what are they telling you? Nothing, nothing yet. We don't, I don't know. They don't know much what's happening? No, I don't know much what's happening. You saw him take them out of the car? Yeah, yeah, I saw him take them out of, I saw him take them out of that truck. And uh, uh, it seemed pretty dangerous because all the cops came with the guns and I think my mom got more shook up when she saw that, but I took her running to the other side to hide. And that's, you took your mom to hide. Yeah. You were that scared you thought something? Yeah, yeah it was bad. I mean, uh, all the, probably like 15, 20 cops came with their guns and uh, they broke that window in the back and uh, they drug them out of the truck. What did you think was happening when you took your mom to hide? I thought they were, I thought the guy maybe had a gun and I thought maybe he was going to shoot. And uh, all I was thinking was about her safety and that's it. If you could tell that guy something, uh, what would you want to tell him? All I right. I, right now, I'm so shook up, I don't even know what, yeah. what to uh, yeah, think. Thank you, you for know. speaking with us, Alfonso. No We're going to keep getting more information about the injured people, guys. Back over to you. All right, Stephen, thank you so much. And uh, once again, it indicates how people were having a normal Friday afternoon when all of this came to a conclusion.